the quadratic formula. I'm going to describe it. So this lesson is all about using probably most people's favorite way of solving a quadratic, a quadratic equation. That's using the quadratic formula. Now you guys probably all seen the quadratic formula from under 1. It's this thing, right? x equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That whole thing. Now, the, let's talk about where it comes from, though. Because it's actually fairly obvious where it comes from. And that is, if we just look at a normal quadratic function right there, and we do what we did, what we did last lesson, which is complete the square, you're going to get the quadratic formula. And that's all this little part right here is to show you, like, hey, right, remember how, how we did this? And you can't have a you can't have a number in front, so you divide by that number, so you divide everything by 2. Over here, they divide everything by a. And then we're like, okay, we want to get the x's by themselves, so we move over the 1 half. In this case, we move over that ugly fraction right there. And then we complete the square. We get the middle term divided by 2 and square it. And then this is, this is them adding to both sides. And once you do that, this factors perfectly, right, every single time. And this side, they just you just have that. What they did from here to here was they, they did common denominator. And then how do you get rid of the square? You square root it, and you're left with this, and then you get this by itself. That's where quadratic form comes from. It's just completing the square. That's all it is. So if you ever need to prove the quadratic form, you just complete the square on the general equation. Anyway, since we have that, this is like the shortcut to completing the square, right? So it's like completing the square without going through all the work. That's the benefit of the quadratic formula. Again, another formula I will give you. I give you the formula because I know how to use them. So I will give you that formula. Let's talk about how to use it. So how do we use the quadratic formula? Well, you, first you got to put it in standard form. So key thing to keep in mind with quadratic formula, you got to set it equal to zero first. So you want to put it in standard form because you have ax plus bx plus c equals zero. Much like completing the square, since quadratic formula is just completing the square, it always works. And that's the benefit for quadratic formula. It always works. So there's only two methods that always work, and that's complete the square, quadratic formula. And for a lot of people, complete the square, quadratic formula is a little easier. So let's just do an example of how to use this thing. So I'll give this right here. Remember, the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So just like before, step one is set equal to zero. So I get x squared plus 6x minus 16 equals 0. Now if we're going to use to complete the square, sorry, the quadratic formula, a is 1, remember a is a coefficient, not the thing, b is 6, and c is negative 16. And all we're going to do is plug into here, right? a is always the x squared term, b is always the linear term, c is always a constant term. So x equals negative 6 plus or minus... 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 16 all over 2 times 1. Now this is 36. 4 times 16 is 64, positive 64 because 2 negatives. So I get negative 6 plus or minus 100 over 2. It's negative 6 plus or minus 10 over 2. And we have two answers. We have x equals negative 6 plus 10 over 2 which is 4 over 2, which is just 2. And we got x equals negative 6 minus 10 over 2, which is negative 16 over 2, which is negative 8. So 2 and negative 8 is my answer. Right, so it's a little work, but it's always the same amount of work generally. It's just, oh, put set equals 0, find my values, plug it in, I get my answer. Again, quadratic formula always works. It's not the fastest way, though. If you notice with this, the fastest way would have been just a factor. Two things that multiply get 6 to get 8, or x minus 8, x plus 2 equals 0. Split it, x equals 8, and negative 2. Fastest way is always a factor. And you always go on a factor first if you can, because it's just so much faster, right? It just took me two seconds. It just took me about a good 30 seconds. It's still not hard, it just takes a little longer than just factoring. So that's always the best way. If you have a choice, factor if you can. But when you can't factor, much like the one we're going to do right now, if I multiply these together, I get 3x squared. No combination of 3 gets me 5. So this is prime. The only way you can solve a problem like this is either by fact, sorry, is either by completing the square or using quadratic formula. Only way, right? Those are the only two ways that always work. Complete the square, which a lot of people don't like to do. And that's, that's supposed to be a square. And quadratic formula. Only ones that work all the time. They're not the fastest way, but they always work. 
So let's compute, let's use a quadratic formula here. And this would be a good one to use a quadratic formula. I would not compute a square here because if you try to do that, you get you gotta get x by itself, and it makes it just ugly. So let's quadratic formula real quick. So negative five plus or minus five squared minus four times a times c all over two times a. So I just like to simplify this first. This is twenty five minus twelve. I get negative 5 plus or minus radical 13 over 6. And that's it. I can't do anything there. That's just the way it is. Nothing nothing to do. Next one. Another one that's prime. Right? Like if I multiply these together to see if I can factor first, I get 5x squared and no combination of 5 gets it. Give me 8. So it's prime. Can't factor it. So the only way to solve this is a quadratic formula. A, B, C. Right? Again, I will give you the formula. You should, kind of, you should really kind of know it by now, though. All over 2a. Okay, so x equals negative 8 plus or minus 8 squared minus 4 times negative 5 times negative 1. All over 2 times negative 5. So this is 64. So many negatives. Negative 20, right, because 4 times 5 is 20, but it's the negative there. So I'm going to get negative 8 plus or minus radical 44 over negative 10. I could break down 44. That's the same thing as saying 4 times 11. The square root of 4 is 2, so this is negative 8 plus or minus 2 rad 11 over 10. Negative 10. Now a couple of these I want to point out. So here, these do not reduce, right? Remember, they're not, like here, 8 and 10. I cannot just cancel these two out, right? If I had, If I gave you this does not do this. Remember, this is stuck. It's a plus. It's stuck. Only way, to f only way to cancel stuff out is by factoring it. And I actually could factor this. These have a 2 in common. So I could get this. And now these reduce because we multiply. So I get my answer is going to be negative 4 plus or minus rad 11 over negative 5. All over negative 5, which should make it look like. That's the idea. So again, do not just cancel. Don't be lazy and cancel these out. It doesn't work that way. You have to be able to cancel all of them out. If you want, you can divide everything by 2. That works still. Again, I cannot shut enough. Do not do this thing. Oh, so disgusting. Anyway, so that's quadratic formula. Next up, let's talk about a special term, the discriminant. Now, discriminant has to do with the number of solutions. That's all it's about. So discriminant tells you how many tells you how many solutions. How tells you about the solutions. So what's going on? The discriminant is the thing underneath the radical. So we know this is our quadratic formula, right? But if we only care about the stuff underneath the radical, that b squared minus 4ac, that tells us things. So really, we have three choices. The thing in there could be negative, right? Like what if I have? What if I gave something like that, and the, the inside thing is a negative? Well, what happens there is you get an imaginary number. Imaginary number means that you have, if it's negative, you have no real roots, right? It doesn't cross ever. So when that happens, you have no real roots, or also known as too complex. Right? So if the discriminant's negative, look what happens, right? If the discriminant's negative, I get an imaginary number, so I have no real roots. They're all imaginary roots. And what does that look like? That means you, that means you don't cross. Because remember, x-intercepts are real roots. So if you get a negative, that means you have no real roots, and that means you have no x-intercepts. So that's the first one it could be. Second, what if that thing's a zero? Right? What if the discriminant's a zero? So you get something like this. Well, this cancels out. You just get negative three over two. You get one answer. Remember how it's when you get one answer? It's a double root. So if the discriminant equals zero, it's there's only one real root, which we call a double root. And finally, what if it's a normal one? What if we get two answers like we did here? What if it's a positive? Well, then we get two answers, plus and minus. So if it's positive, you get two answers. And that's what the discriminant tells you. Let me write it again a little nicer. So the discriminant 
which is this here's a for, we use a triangle to, to say it's a discriminant that's the formula for it triangle is b squared minus 4ac just the thing underneath the radical and if that thing is positive that means you have two row roots if that thing equals zero that means it cancels out you only get one row root And if that thing is negative, that means you can have a negative underneath the radical, so you have zero real roots or two imaginary, aka two imaginary. So that's what discriminant is. This is a quick way of saying, hey, what type of roots do you have here? If you take the discriminant and it's positive, that means you have two real, so you can get a plus and minus. If you get zero, that means it's going to go away and you have one real root. If it's negative, that means you can have imaginary numbers. And that's kind of it. So let's do a couple of examples of the discriminant, and all I want to know is what what do we get for discriminant, and then how many real roots do we have? And again, I'll give you the form for discriminant. Discriminant is this: b squared minus four ac. You just gotta know how to use it, and what it means. It's like okay, that's a discriminant. Let's find a discriminant for this thing. So this is a, this is b, this is c. So I'm doing the discriminant. I'm gonna get eight minus four times three times two. This is 64 minus 24, so I get 40, right? So the screen is 40. What does that mean? It's positive. That's all I care about. It's positive, so I have two real roots. That's all that matters. It's a positive value. So let's do the next one. A, B, C. So discriminant B squared minus 4AC. I get negative 6 squared minus 4 times 2 times 9. 36. Now, look what happens here. Negative 8, 72. 36 minus 8, I get negative 36. So this is, again, all I really care about is it's a negative. If it's a negative, I'm going to have imaginary numbers. So this is zero real roots. Or two imaginary, if you want to say it. So zero real roots. Last one you probably could guess. This is A, B, C. 8 squared minus 4 times negative 16 times negative 1. I get 64 minus 64, which is 0, which means I have one real root. So it's a little tricky, right? My answer is 0. That means when you take, when you're doing the formula, that's a 0. So you're going to get one answer. So 0 is one real root. Negative is 0 real root. So that's the only part that's a little tricky. But that's this lesson.